Swadikra. Hello everyone, it's Casey Cardinal again here to talk with you about Thai weapons this time around. Specifically, we're going to talk about the Krabi. In Krabi Gabon. When we talk about the Krabi in Krabi Gabon, it's usually used for the saber like European sword borrowed by the Thai people. However, back in the day, Krabi used to be the term for all sorts of swords. So, Da, Da, and Krabi kind of are meaning all the same thing. So, this is technically a Krabi right now. However, these days for Krabi Kaban, we refer to this as the Da at this point. So, Da Nung Mu, one hand sword. Or, Da Song Mu, two hand swords. Same swords, just using two hands. Recently, a lot of uh, historians have believed that this mix of a long Da so Da sword with the point of the single edge sword came from a mix between Japan and India. However, India was the is the main influence when it comes to the sword, up until when the Europeans came and the Kirby changed to that saber style sword. The thing is what makes these swords kind of spe special is that Southeast Asia in general uses these kind of style swords. You see these in Burma, uh, Laos, Thailand obviously, in some cases um, you see a similar things in Cambodia. However, right here, this is very synonymous. This style especially is very synonymous with the Ayutthaya style. Now to say that there is one type of Ayutthaya style or there's one type of Sukhothai Thai style, another country in uh, Thailand or Lana or Burma is very inaccurate, I guess to say because there are many different types of swords made for many different types of purposes. Some swords were particularly heavy so they can break through a shield like this one. Other swords were meant to be for a commoner and other swords were meant to be for royalty. And a lot of these swords were custom made and each one has morphed over time. For instance, the Dao sword has a very uh, straight, doesn't really have a point to it sometimes. While the Kabikabong uh, sword sometimes also doesn't have a point to it, but other times it does. So to say that this style of sword is 100% Kabikabong is not entirely correct. This dot, this Krabi, you know, it's not 100%, especially as how the art form has morphed over, the, over hundreds of years in that sense. However, I'm just trying to point, to you guys, point out to you guys if you want to figure out what a sword is, like a definitive style of sword that is identified with Krabi Kabang. The style from a UTL with the long handle is the one that everybody's going to associate you with. But there is kind of a general rule of thumb when it comes to figuring out what a, a UTL style sword is. This is it, essentially. This is a practice version of that sword. If you were to see an UTL style sword, you'd see the similar edges where there'd be a long handle. Within the handle, there'd be three little notches or jacks. Uh, there'd be a little point at the end. The blade is single-edged. There wouldn't be a guard protecting you from everything else. Hence why our hands have to come back before we attack forward. The advantages of having a long handle like this one is one, it allows you to block in a different ways from stabbing. It allows you to grapple and lock as well. But it also um, has fantastic balance to the actual sword itself. A lot of Krabi Kaban artists that you see, in these days especially, definitely use the over the top swing of the arm over the head and then coming down hard, which is not incorrect, but it's not necessary. In many ways, unless you are fighting with a wooden stick, if you're fighting with an actual sword, you don't need to actually cut too hard. And with the amount of balance that this sword actually has, just rotate your hand and slice. Another great advantage of the long sword with the handle that's very balanced like the, this is that you're able to use two of them. These are actually quite light when it comes to battle. The disadvantages of the sword are kind of have to do with, with the guard right here. Even samurai swords have a small guard and actually eventually down the line a UTS style swords would start to mimic some of the actual samurai swords themselves. However, these swords barely had any sing barely have a guard on them. So that's why whenever we we attack like this and then we bring it back up to, towards our ear, it's really pulling it back to protect our hand. 
Another problem is, is that if I was to not look at this sword and try to grab it and come into attack, there's an easy chance for me to attack you with the false edge. Which, the false e edge is not sharp in any way. So when I was to come down this way, so this is all circular. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that the attack wouldn't affect, be effective. It's just not, it might uh, lessen the chance of it being a killer blow. Keep in mind, uh, when I say the style from a Utia, that doesn't mean that when you see things from the movies, that that style of sword isn't 100% historically correct. The big thing at the end is kind of the part that I don't 100% believe in. And it's because with it being so big at the end, you lose that balance that the original Krabi or Dop Sword had when it came to attacking. But it's still Krabi Kabong. Those swords are part of Krabi Kabong and they are a, a Krabi Kabong sword. It's just that they might not be perfectly historically accurate. And that's where I'm worried that I might be getting a ton of comments about this. Anyway, that's that's my thoughts about the Kirby, uh, Kirby Kabong sword. If you guys are interested in me talking about more swords or more detailed about the Ayutthaya style swords or even what a Sukhothai sword was or one from Lana, what that kind of looks like, please subscribe and like and comment on my channel. Thank you very much, everybody. Swadikrao.